So let's go into the fun level. This is a level that I think Alex and I usually like to watch the most. Those guys are great up there. Uh, Double A Pensacola. This is a fun level. It had Troy Johnson, Griffin, Conine. Those guys are now up. But, I mean, it had Yuri Perez at one point this season. Uh, and then you have the great story of Mr. Pat Monteverde. But let's start with the offense. I want to start with hmm, – who do you want to start with, Alex? Uh, we were talking about Banfield. Let's go Banfield. Let's go Banfield, yeah. I mean, man, when he's, when we talk about one of the most improved players in the system this year, you have to go to Will, Will Banfield. Uh, he was called – he was promoted midseason last year to A Pensacola. He was great for them at the start. Uh, caught Yuri, caught Dax obviously the best defensive catcher in the organization hands down probably the best catcher in the organization in the farm system at least uh he's been great he's been hitting for power he has 17 home runs this season the most he's ever hit for his career um he's put the ball on play not too much but obviously doesn't get on base too much i think the big thing with banfield is this year alex he's finally found an offensive rhythm something he hasn't been able to do in years past but I guess the only concern with Banfield is the fact that most of his offense is relying on the power. And that's what we've seen. Very low walk rate. I mean, not walk rate. On base percentage, 304. But 470 slugging, the highest he's put up in his career. Uh, 23% strikeout rate. Not too. It's not bad, but it's not good either for a guy who only walks at a 4.3%. So um, Banfield, I think we've made this. We said this many times before. If it's not triple, like he should be a big leaguer right now, obviously considering how bad Nick Quartz has and Jacob Stallings have been. He could slide in there. He could catch Yuri Perez. He's a good defensive catcher. So um, I think he will be competing for that starting spot next season if if they do end up uh, letting go of Jacob Stallings and uh, if they kind of, if, you know, in a certain, to a certain degree, they kind of cut bait with Nick Quartz as unlikely, but he'll be he'll be in a competition if it's for a starting or backup job in spring training 2024. Yeah, absolutely. Everything you just said is absolutely true. Um Man, um, you know, had him on on the podcast a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, did some uh, did some research on him before that. Um, definitely has found something in this switch in his mechanics and his approach. Um, talked to him about it. He said himself, it's just so much more comfortable now. Uh, before he was like really high elbows up by his face. Now it's elbows more out over the plate. He's gotten rid of a front a front foot trigger that he was using. Um, so there's just so many changes mechanically for him this year, and it's really worked because of like you said that ability to just find the baseball more um, for, for plus contact with the 17 home runs um, previous career. high was last year, 11. Now he's at 17 already this year. The main thing for this player, defenses are also been great. Still um, the main thing for this player that I would say that is just so concerning still is the rate at which he walks, which is literally almost zero. Um, this guy has 92 strikeouts and 17 walks. He just does not walk at all. So that's the one thing you can point to with this player and say, okay, that's what's really holding back his 304 on base percentage. That's why that is what it is. 265 batting average. If you can work counts a little better, yeah, it'll probably go up, right? So yes, he's done great work with the power with the 470 uh, slugging percentage. Definitely found something, but there's still work to do here with the offense, I think for sure. Gotta walk more than that. You put a guy with 17 walks or through this point in a full minor league season in major league baseball, it's not going to translate very well. So this guy definitely has shown improvement. There's still improvement he needs to show, though, in order to really show that he's majorly ready right now with the bat. Defense already is. But to show that with the bat, there needs to be a little bit more uh, projection here with with patience, walks, and uh, just the ability to work counts a little bit better for Will Banfield. I think the next level for him, the next step would be kind of put him in AAA, see if he could kind of do this at the next level. Obviously, AA is the hardest level in minor league baseball, but when you look at the AAA level, it's one that kind of is like, borderline MLB obviously that's where you kind of have your quadruple a players etc I do want to ask you actually now that we're on this uh, minor league topic I got a question I put out a tweet mentioning you know if anyone has any questions for us I want to ask you Nick Reddy he's on I did not know this he's on military leave he is so he was a 2019 draft pick he only had three at bats in his 2022 career and they asked, what is the status on him? He's still on military leave for what it shows on MILB. So I don't know if you I – didn't, I didn't even know this was a player until right now. So if you want – I guess not dive into him. We don't have to because we don't have to talk about a guy who's on military leave. But cool that he's actually doing what he – you know, serving his country. Yeah, it's been like that from the start for him. Uh, what is it, Navy, I think, that he's in? Um, so, yeah, um, um, sure. the son of former 
um, former Hammerheads manager, um, Randy Reddy, actually, who was a former Major League Baseball player. Um, so, yeah, this guy, this is part of this guy's career. Um, baseball's a part-time thing for this guy. This, the guy's job is to go serve his country. So um, it's not to say that you can't make a baseball career after that, but right now that's, that's what his focus is. Um, he's been on military leave all year. Um, eventually he'll be back. But, yeah, um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what this guy is. Um, you know, and, um, you know, he'll be back and he'll, he'll get back into games and stuff like that. And I'm sure he'll, you know, as long as the Marlins keep him around, um, he'll be a guy that, that, that can still get into baseball games, but, um, you can tell that this guy is a, uh, has a commitment somewhere else. Um, and that's definitely understood. So yeah. Um, good power though. Uh, Nick Reddy got really good power. Um, my worry is for a player like this is like, when you do come back, you've missed a full year. What have you been doing? with your actual other job and um, you know, what's that look like after you come back and can, can you actually make, can you actually come back and make a baseball career? It probably will be tough, but um, something to be said for that. Like you said, Kev, just, um, you know, um, baseball secondary for him. Yeah. He has, he has commitments elsewhere, which is um, definitely respectable. Uh, all right. Moving on with double a, I do want to, this guy deserves a shout out, Alex, and I've mentioned it. And I do think he deserves the promotion to triple as well. Jose Devers, baby Devers. Man, this guy has had himself a year. I, I, I think that's the best way to put it. Um, they kind of mishandled, I believe, his development. They called him up way, way too early. This guy is only 20, 20, 23 years old, still fairly young. Um, putting up his best season since 2019, 276, 352, 421. He also has an OPS of 773, 107 WRC+, plus, 7 home runs, 46 RBIs. Uh, barely striking out. I think the lowest strikeout percentage since that twenty since twenty twenty one when he was with AAA, uh, fourteen point eight percent, eight point six walk rate. That is the highest since twenty nineteen. Carver, man, this guy also tapping into a little bit of power with the seven homers. Um, mainly playing second base for the Blue Wahoos. He deserves a promotion. I think that's the best way to put it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, very very encouraging to see this from from Devers, especially after what he went through, um, you know, with injuries and stuff like that in years past, I think the Marlins were even like calling him up to the Marlins. I don't think he played in a major league game yet, but like during, I think the COVID year, like Marlins were like calling him up to the team and because they needed bodies around. Right. Uh, he sat on the bench for a while, um, you know, and then he got injured. Um, he's had shoulder injuries a lot. Um, so to see him come out um, of that and do what he's doing this year um, for uh, after missing, like basically almost the whole year, I think he did like what half a year last year. Um, because of injuries um, so and really struggled last year. Um, I mean, last year was not good for Jose Devers. And a lot of us were like, yeah, I, I don't know about this guy. Um, but to see what he's doing this year, coming back from a year where he hit 209, 263, 310, to hitting 276, 352, 421, pretty impressive. Um, so clearly he's found something. Clearly he's back to full health. He's played most of the year. Um, been pretty decent. It's looked pretty good for him. Um, encouraging for sure. And Pensacola as well, not, not an easy place to hit. Um, either so positional flexibility um, with shortstop and second base that he can play uh, good bat to ball that we're seeing added some power in still just 23 so it's tough to see Devers at age 23 with uh, with double a where we have 25 year olds who deserve it in, in low a but or single advance but that's another story that we already went through anyways yes encouraging to see from from Mr. Devers uh, coming into the year he had three career home runs and then he hit seven so clearly he's found something Yep. So I guess the next guy we're going to mention, we'll leave Jacob Berry for last. We'll go with Victor Mesa Jr. He was one of the top players entering. I, I guess he was one of the guys who had the hottest of starts for, um, you know, for, for double A. Um, but now he's kind of gotten way back down to earth, 228, 302, 376, 678 with an 80 WRC+. Plus. But I guess on the encouraging side, he has tapped into the most power of his career, 11 home runs, 55 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, still a great center fielder. Um, any concerns with Victor Victor? With not Victor Victor, Victor Mason Jr.? I, you know, to a certain degree, I said this guy should have been AAA at one point. But you know, when you look at the stats, maybe it, it, I think that's going to be the big storyline in the minor leagues. Where does Victor Mason Jr. start next season? Yeah, a lot of strikeouts um, is his main thing. Again, we say that about a lot of guys, but tons of strikeouts here. Um, 105 strikeouts and 37 walks. Um, that's what's limiting it. But what I would say is, man, this guy's. I still think this. This guy has one of the best swings in this organization. It's so good. Uh, the bat speed's there. It's a great balanced swing. His approach is also pretty good at the plate. Um, you know, just really needs to cut down on the strikeouts. So 
I still see a ton of potential in Victor Jr. Uh, the Marlins are going to get something of value out of that signing duo that they made uh, with this guy, because I think this guy definitely is going to be pretty good. Um, does need to work out the strikeouts. Um, he struck out 100 times in each of his past three seasons, uh, at least 100 times, I should say. Um, so there's there's things to work out there. Um, you know, just doesn't walk enough. Walked a little bit more last year, but this year you can see the walks are back down. So um, that needs to get worked out. A little bit more plate presence, a little bit more patience. But the approach overall for him and his mechanics are so sweet. And when he gets the bat on the ball, it looks really, really good. So I like uh, Victor Jr. Um, it's got good speed to him as well. Definitely makes it happen in uh, in center field. Um, is a natural center fielder. Probably one of few guys in the Marlins organization that we could say will stick in center field is Victor Jr. Yeah. So real good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where they put him next year. Um, I think it's possible he repeats double A um, just because of the, uh, like I said, the work that he needs to do with strikeouts. But power's there. Um, still got some room to put on some weight. Um, but get, get into some more power as well. Um, 21 years old playing at double A, so no rush. So I would definitely say probably next year back at double A, but yeah, if you can cut down their strikeouts, man, um, it's going to get even better for this player and, um, hasn't been like all sunshine and rainbows for him this year. Uh, he struggled at times, but it's a 21 year old playing in double A. So yeah. Um, like this player a lot and I'm very high on him still. Yeah. And, and, and that's the other thing. Cause let's say he does work the triple A gets to the major leagues right now. You just choose him at center field. He could still play the corners very well as well. So if he does make the transition, it would likely be one of the corner spots. Now you never know jazz Chisholm. You never know what could happen with him. He gets traded. He's injured, whatever you have Victor Mesa jr. So that's, that's the good thing there. I want to talk to you about the, this year's futures uh, game MVP. Uh, Nasi Nunez, uh, man, th if there's one guy who we are certain could stick at shortstop, it is this guy. He's the best defender in the minor league, not only in the, Mar in the Marlins system. I would say you could argue that he's one of the best defensive shortstops in minor league baseball at the double A level. Um, this season, 221, 336, 284, 620 with a 75 WRC plus, 14% walk rate, 19% strikeout rate. He's always had high strikeout percentages, something I've noticed fairly high. But he always walks like at his at crazy rates, 18% <laughs> when 2022 with high A. Uh, but four home runs, I believe they're all opposite field homers, 37 RBIs, and 41 stolen bases. He had like 60-something last season. He's kind of on pace to kind of get close to that. Carver, this is a guy whose offense isn't the greatest, but we do see some improvements. Obviously, the opposite field home runs is the first one. Very impressed on that end. Obviously, gets on base at fairly high rates. The walks, very patient hitter, but very aggressive. Just what have you seen with Nassim Nunez, who probably deserves to, you know, probably will begin at AAA next season, depending what they do with guys like Amaya and Xavier Edwards. Obviously, we'll get into those guys very soon. Yeah, no, um, Nassim, uh, great spring training, really impressed. Um, the staff, uh, I talked to Skip about him. Skip was impressed with him as well, even though he saw him in limited time. Uh, but he stuck with the team all the way through spring training. Um, did some work as well. Um, you know, with just more plus contact. That's kind of what this guy really needs is the ability to hit for more plus contact. Hits for simple contact and lets the speed go to work for him, which is totally fine. Um, but you kind of want to see a little bit more in contact consistency from Mr. Nunez. Um, so yeah, uh, that's his main thing. It's just some more contact consistency. But man, when this guy gets on base, he could steal every single time. He'll tell you himself, yeah, I look to steal every single time. So um, yeah, really liked Nassim Nunez and what we've seen from him. Um, you know, it's just the ability to get the ball in the air a little bit more. Um, you know, when you have um, a ground out air out rate of 1.08, that means you're, you're, you're hitting a lot more grounders than, than, uh, than things in the air. So uh, you want to see a little bit more in that regard and his ability to, you know, just come by some more loft, um, come by a little bit more power as well, if possible, um, at least a little bit more line drives. You know, he's never going to hit for home runs, many home runs at all. His four home runs this year are twice as many than he's hit in his career. So uh, coming into the year, he only had two home runs. Now he has four. So he's doubled his career total. So I don't think we expect him to ever hit for super, super premium power at all. But if he can get under the ball a little bit more and show a little bit more loft, a little bit more line drive contact, that's kind of what we want to see from Nassim. And then, like you said, the defense is so, so special. So it could either be double A or triple A next year. Uh, we'll see. Uh, 23. So you want, kind of want to start seeing it happen here shortly if he's going to reach his full ceiling, but it doesn't have to happen today. Like, fully so if he starts in double a maybe you could push him up to triple a late next year or you could start him in triple a depending what they do with like you said infielders that they have so we'll see um but 
Uh, you know, 620 OPS, you want to see that come up. Um, but man, um, it's going to, it's going to depend pretty fully on the, uh, on base percentage rather than the slugging. So, yeah. um, yeah, uh, like Nassim though, great kid, great guy, uh, still 23. So still got a bunch of time to him and, um, we'll see what he does. But, um, but yeah, um, I'm not out on Nassim at all. Um, I really like him and, um, I think he's got more room to grow even, uh, as we go into the rest of this year and next year. And that's the thing, even if you don't rely on much on his bat to ball or his offensive skills, you could definitely rely on him somehow getting on base oh, and yeah. putting himself in scoring position, which is the big thing for him. Yeah. So next guy I want to get into is one of the more underrated guys in the system. We haven't spoken about him too much. Bennett Hostetler, man, has this guy improved. I think this is one of the most improved prospects in the system. He was – he's still playing third. He was a third baseman converted into catcher. He still plays third base. We've seen him every once in a while there. But, man, this season with high A, with high a did not get too much success. He was promoted basically to be a filler for, I believe, PMAC, who got injured at the time. Uh, right now, this is the situation with – you know, this is a slash line. He's stuck at a high at double A. He's hitting 252, 357, 491, 847 with a 123 WRC plus, 10 home runs, 31 RBIs. 11.9% walk with the highest of his career and a 25.4 strikeout rate. Alex, man, this guy has been very impressive. I mean, I don't, to a certain degree, not, not that we were out on him, but man, we were pretty low on this guy, to be honest with you. I know he's one of the younger guys in the system. I believe he's younger. Yeah, no, he's 25. So probably goes to AAA soon. Maybe spends another year at double A, given the fact they have Banfield, PMAC there. He would kind of, it would pave the way for him to be the everyday catcher at Pensacola. Yeah, you just said it. Look at all these look at all these catchers that this team has. <laughs> Banfield, PMAC, and Ben and Hosteller. And you got to try to get them all playing time. But like you said, um Hosteller just didn't allow himself to be sent down. Like there was no way that they were gonna send him down when PMAC got back. They just weren't gonna do it. So either somebody was gonna go up, um, you know, PMAC to triple A or you know, whatever it is. And I, you know, that's that's what what did happen. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, now they're all back, like PMAC's back here with uh with with double a so so yeah i mean it's it's definitely uh it's definitely interesting to see these three catchers i thought pmac could have stuck stuck up there at uh at triple a uh, but now of course you have jorge alfaro in the picture and austin allen is doing well so you know they have to make room at double a for all of these catchers and it's difficult to do uh but hosteller is a main catalyst for that but you can't send the guy down he has 10 home runs um his power numbers are insane um, there's no reason for that you can make or no testament that you can make to send this guy back to, uh, to single A advance. It just isn't going to happen. And that's because Bennett has done what he's done after last year, only playing nine or this year, only playing nine games with the sky carp last year, though, he did spend a full season there. So he does not need to repeat that level. So I'm glad that he's up. Um, it's a guy that just learned to catch, uh, very recently. Um, yeah. so very interesting progression. He's made it happen very quickly. Um, I want to see a little bit more in the walks. Um, doesn't really strike out a lot though. Only 55 strikeouts um, in over 190 at bats. So with 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 double A, um, you know, uh, like you said, Kev, a little bit more balls in play. Uh, relies a bit too much on the power. I think. Yeah. Um, you want that's to see a little that, bit more that's in play. The trend with that's kind of like the trend with these catchers that you know some of yeah. these guys, Bamfield Bam and Hostel. Yeah. 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 So it's good to have for power, but you, you don't want to rely on it all the time. You know what I mean? Especially as you get yeah. to the major leagues um, because pitchers at the major league level are going to exploit that. So want to see a little bit more balls in play, um, just kind of more take what you can get kind of approach. I think that he could use to improve that in his approach a little bit. The power is great. You can't live on it though, especially if it's not like a plus, plus, plus tool for you. And it's not for Bennett. It's a good tool for him, but it's not like elite. So um, that's what I would say for Hostel, or just a little bit more balls in play, bring the average up a little bit. Um, and power is going to come naturally for him because he's a strong kid. So great to see it though. Um, I think he's done pretty well with catching. Um, talk to some pitchers. They don't mind throwing to him. They think he's pretty good back there. Uh, still very raw at that position though. Still has a lot to learn at it because he did start, just start catching like what a year and a half ago. So, um, yeah, definitely want to see, um, a little bit more from the defense. Can he make it stick at catcher? I think he probably can. Um, at least at a, at a replacement level rate, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and then if that offense permeates and it gets a little bit better, man, you definitely live with that. So I like Bennett, man, under the radar guy, not ranked by a lot of people at all. Um, especially not in top thirties, but yeah, Where do you um, have him? he's been fun. Do you, do you have him just out of it? Uh, out of, out of top, top 30? 30? Um, 
I mean, at this point, I mean, I have to redraw my next list, but at this point, I would probably put him either just outside of it or just inside of it, depending. Um, just needs to show more at catcher. And yes, this has been a great stretch for him, but this is the first time that he's shown this. Can he make it permeate, right? Yes, is this going to be full time? So I kind of just want to see a little bit more before I say, okay, this is a true top 30 prospect. Where do you have him now? Um, I think I have him just outside. Uh, let me see my last list. Hold on one second. I'll tell you. Because mm-hmm. yeah, just, just for reference, guys, Alex has like a top 100. So if you guys want to reference that list, you guys could definitely do it. Fish on first has a top 30, which was done by Isaac, Eli, and then myself. So you guys could look at that one. But obviously, if you guys want to see a top 100, Carver's got you covered with that. So I believe yeah. you have him like in the 40s or 50s. Yeah, I think it sounds about right. Um, I, I would have him higher than that. I think I think we do have him in the 40s in our last list. So okay. I think we would have him a little bit higher than that as of our next list, me and Danny. Um, but yeah, um, I, w- I would probably place him probably just outside of top 30 right now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jake Barry, let's wrap up double A level. This is the big one that I think everyone wants us to talk about. Uh, it's been up and down for Barry, to be honest with you, Alex. A lot of downs, especially in high A, just not good defensively. Doesn't just, just the hit tool hasn't been there. I, I don't know. I don't know where he just hasn't been good. Uh, but he gets promoted. He gets moved up. Let's say moved up because at the time it was just to fill out the first base spot there. But man, he's been good. Looking at the stats since June second, is that we'll, we'll look at until today, August sixteenth. Um, two fifty four, three twelve, four twenty three, seven thirty five with five home runs, thirty four RBIs. Uh, he's been better at the double A level. He's kind of struggled a little bit. Uh, two two hundred eight, two fifty three. 390 with a 643 OPS, 63 WRC plus. Uh, he's been playing a lot more first base, which is, I guess, the biggest thing that we could take away from Barry's prom- promotion to Double A. Um, at times, he looks great. From he, it's not like high A where he just looked really bad throughout most of it. He's looked pretty good for the most part at Double A. Obviously, he's been relying a little bit more on the power. Obviously, we, he has he has um three homers since joining the the Wahoos. I think he sticks at Double A going into next year. No way he he gets promoted. I'd be floored if he does, unless you need you you have the need for someone like Barry there. But Alex, um, just what have you seen from Jacob Barry with the Wahoos thus far? A streaky player. <laughs> That's exactly what you see. Brian De La Cruz, a very 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 streaky player with the bat. At times it looks yeah. great. At times it looks real bad. So I mean, yes, he goes on these stretches where he can hit home runs. He goes on these stretches where he strings together games where he hits in back-to-back-to-back games. Um, and then he just goes completely cold. So um, it's been better lately, like you said. But the thing that you worry about, like we said, for a couple of other players is consistency. How consistent is this player? Does he have the consistency or can he show the consistency to prove that he earned himself his draft spot? That's the question you have to ask. So, um, and I think at this point in his career at age 22, yeah, there's still time. He's playing against uh, some guys that are older than him. Um, you know, I think slightly under the average age of a double A player. So, um, you know, there's still still time for him to grow into that mold of a first round draft pick. But first round draft picks usually show a lot more than this at this point in their careers. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough um, overall for Barry. Um, I haven't been enamored or overall impressed with just, like I said, the consistency and his ability to, you know, fully put his, what was, what was described as a very advanced offensive skill set. We have not seen that. So um, they drafted him for offense. Uh, clearly they did not have to draft him for defense. Clearly. Um, I think they've left him at third base too long. I think he should be a first baseman um, slash DH. Um, maybe you could try him on a left field. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely, definitely think they need to get this guy off of third base, uh, like permanently, like, like uh, yesterday yeah, like perm- and permanently, like you don't, yeah. you're not playing there anymore. Right. So saw a couple of things. We saw him walking around with a first base glove a little bit in camp. Um, we know he's been working out there and stuff, but there just hasn't been too much in game time for him at that spot, which I, I think is where he belongs. So that's what I would say for this player. I'm not overall impressed. Impressed. I know a lot of us are not overall impressed with this player. I understand the sentiment, but there is time. Um, you know, he did just get drafted, so there there is time for this guy to still, you know, show that he can live up to potential. But it's kind of weaning, I would say, honestly, just because of the streakiness of this player. It it needs to be a lot more consistent. 
I guess we could even look at just his same draft at guys who have been better. Um, uh, we could talk about Zach Neto. He's a big leader. Brooks Lee. He's in AAA. And we could even look at this year's draft. Just today, Nolan Shanuel gets the the promote gets is a big leaguer for god's sakes he got yeah. drafted like less than a month ago almost and he's a big leaguer so it kind of shows you what miami's intentions were with barry miami wanted barry kind of to be that type of zach netto type player where they promote him very quickly through the system and that just hasn't been the case so uh that's the last yeah, and these, these go ahead these teams will get the i mean the marlins are not going to get it with barry but these teams that do promote these top prospects um in a certain certain amount of time or a pretty short amount of time they get the ppi incentive um that's the uh prospect promotion incentive so you get a draft pick for that so there's incentive to do that now that's part of what the league did as part of the cba to get rid of um of um or to try to limit service time manipulation so there's more incentive to promote and challenge guys now right if they're ready for it the angels clearly think shanuel who literally has played in next to no minor league games is ready for it um you know uh so the marlins don't really have a guy like that. And, you know, maybe you would have liked to see that out of Barry. You definitely would have liked to see that out of Barry, but it ain't going to happen. Um, Yuri Perez doesn't qualify because he wasn't a draft pick. So where's the next Marlins draft pick that is going to allow the Marlins to earn that incentive? That remains to be seen. Probably never, really. Yeah. Well, not right now, at least. Not, not in this last draft. I can't think of anyone. Maybe maybe no, you could have made the case for some so. like, maybe you could have made the case for some like Alderman at the time, but like, man, he struggled so bad that... Yeah. He's probably going to repeat yeah. the low A level. So, and you go high school with the first two picks too, right? So it's even less for this yeah. draft. It's less, less likely. So, anyways, that's a different conversation. But 